First night sunset, epic. What's up everybody, welcome back to Planet Auditory and in this video I'm going to be covering my first week in my sailing adventure. We sail from Malaysia all the way down to Singapore, so let's get into it. So when I ended the last video, it was Thursday the 1st of September and our plan was to leave on the 2nd of September. The plan was to head straight to Singapore which was going to be a 48 hour straight sail without stopping. However, when we went to go leave on the 2nd, Nathan noticed something very important was not working. This thing here reads your depth. Basically, we need to stay at least three meters deep in water at all times. And um, at the moment, it's not working. So we had to wait and get like a lead, like a wire fix, but that didn't work out. So, so in the end, we were stuck at the marina for two days waiting for the device to get fixed. But then eventually, we finally left. And man, I was so excited. All right, we've started. We've begun. First stop, Singapore. Not that we're actually doing too much sailing just yet because we're going against the wind so we have to motor most of the way, but here we go. This is so exciting. First day of sailing went super, super smooth, it was awesome, best way to start, clear skies, and then we got to enjoy the nicest sunset ever, which is a great way to start the first night of sailing. By the time, now we must rely on the moon. Basically how it worked was we were going to take shifts during the night, three to six hour shifts each, and we basically wanted to make sure the boat was continuously going in the right direction without the water getting too shallow and making sure there weren't any huge cargo ships we were going to hit. Now to do that, to keep the boat going in the right direction, it's super easy. We basically had what's called a chart plotter, which was an iPad, which then showed all the depths and all the shipping lanes. And when you looked at the chart plotter, you could see whether you needed to go right or left to stay in the right amount of depth. If there was a boat coming up, you knew you had to go right or left. And you just put it into the autopilot and make sure the boat was adjusting correctly. And Nathan took the first shift, so I went to bed around 1 a.m. just as I started getting tired and just as I fell asleep, I heard this giant bang. I came running out, Nathan says, Zach, 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 I need your help. And one of the belts that ran to the Oldenator had snapped. So we were stuck in the middle of the ocean, middle of the night, trying to fix this belt. Luckily though, Nathan had spare belts, we had spare parts, we had tools. So Nathan got under the engine, started fixing it up. I gave a little bit of help with my light and putting a bit of pressure on the alternator and within 25 minutes, we were up and sailing again. So once we were going again, I went to bed. I got like three hours sleep. Nathan woke me up at 4 a.m. to start my solo shift. Good morning everybody. This officially marks the start of day two on our way to Singapore. Woke up about 6 a.m., not much sleep. Storm hit pretty bad. But the sun is now rising and it's beautiful. I've got myself a coffee, ham and cheese sandwich. Check out the sunrise. Storm. Life's good. So the rest of the day was pretty smooth sailing and then around midday we were approaching a marina called Port Dixon and Nathan thought it was a pretty good idea to check into the marina, get some parts fixed because Singapore is super expensive while Malaysia is super cheap. So we went to the marina, checked in, um, I then did a little bit of exploring, although there wasn't too much around but it was still cool because I was in an area where there were no other westerners just Malaysians, so I got to have some local food, check out the area, it was pretty sick. So we stayed one night in Port Dixon, didn't actually get any repairs done, they didn't have any spare parts, they didn't have anyone to actually help fix the boat. So the next day around 6 a.m. we ended up leaving. We we're exactly 24 hours away from Singapore, 
So it's gonna be another overnight shift. The day went pretty smoothly, good weather, not much to really report. But then around 7 p.m. we got some like really bad winds. So Nathan was like, nah, this is a waste. So we ended up just going into the bay, parked there for a few hours, and then at around 11 p.m. the wind dropped. Nathan said, all right, sweet, let's rock and roll. And around 2 p.m. we ended up sailing into Singapore. It was an awesome feeling finally reaching Singapore, but the amount of shipping container ships were insane. They were everywhere. Now this video was meant to be way longer. My plan was to actually, once we got to the marina, go to Singapore for two days, check it out and include that in this vlog. But here comes the plot twist. With a heavy heart, it makes me really sad to say that I actually got off the boat and did not return. Therefore, I am not sailing to Australia anymore. I will not be even sailing through Indonesia. And that is because me and Nathan were just two very different people. I'm an incredibly positive person. I love life. Even when something bad happens, I always see the positive side of it. And whenever you finally get past that hurdle, as you guys might have seen in my hitchhiking videos, like it feels amazing and I'm super happy. To me though, Nathan was like a really, really negative person. Someone I didn't really want to be around. For example, when we first left the marina the very first day, I was like, yes, this is going to be sick. I'm so excited. This is going to be amazing. Nathan was just like, no, it's boring. It's boring. It's fucking boring. You're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to enjoy it. Then if something like broke down, I would be like, don't worry, man. We can fix it. We'll get through this. And he was like, oh, fuck, fuck, oh, fuck, fuck. And then we got to a marina and he started abusing the people at the marina saying because they didn't have any parts. He was like, your marina is hopeless. Like, no wonder there's no one here. That's just a few examples. Then also, I was trying very hard to make conversation. I asked him a thousand questions about like what he got up to in life, what uh, he did back at home in Australia. And not once did he ask a single question to me about what I've been doing, about my trip, like what I like. And I understand if you don't really want to like, if you don't really want to chat to someone, you don't really want to get to know someone, but if you're going to be spending two months together, I feel like you should put a little bit of effort in, form some kind of relationship. And for me to spend two months with someone who was incredibly negative and saw everything in a really bad way, and just didn't seem to really appreciate life, even though we were doing an amazing thing and sailing through Indonesia and to Australia, it was just gonna drive me crazy. I had to get off the boat. I feel like in a situation like that, like one person is going to influence the other. Like either my positivity was gonna rub onto him and he would change his thoughts or his negativity would rub onto me. And after a week with him, that was sort of what was going on. That started to happen to me and I was starting to see really negatively and it was bringing my vibes down. So I said thank you to him. I really appreciated it. Thanks again, Nathan. And then when I went to go leave, he barely even wanted to shake my hand. It was just really weird. We just didn't really get along. We didn't really see eye to eye. So now I'm in Singapore. I've been here the last few days. I've been chilling out, trying to decide what to do. I was thinking of going to Australia and vanning down the East Coast, but I really don't want to go back to Australia. I currently have about $800 left and I really want to keep traveling for a few more months. I still want to get some cool vlogs done. So now what I'm going to do is the channel might go a little bit quiet for a bit because I'm just going to spend the next few months going to different workaways. If anyone doesn't know what workaway is, it's basically a way for you to work for someone without pay but they give you accommodation food you can learn cultures really really well usually you're in a place where there's not so many tourists not so many westerners and you live like a local which is something i'd really like to do it would be totally sick i've got a few rural sustainable eco farms i want to go work out 
maybe go teach some English to Malaysian people. Uh, there's a few cool hostels I might be working out on some islands. So I'm gonna do some cool things still and I'm gonna be uploading videos as much as I can. I'll be vlogging any workaway experience I get. The next video will be something sick. I'm probably gonna head to Penang, an island in the north of Malaysia. I'll do a video there. Once I've got my work away, I'll do a video for what I'm doing my work away. But that's it, guys. I'm really sorry about the sailing. Trust me, I'm devastated myself. But shit happens in life sometimes, and you just gotta roll with it. But anyway, guys, I'll keep you guys updated as soon as I can. I'll get another vlog to you guys as soon as I can. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon, but for now, 